Good afternoon. It's, it's, it's almost like uh, midnight uh, in here. I think this is time for me to extend my gratitude to NCDO uh, for inviting me to participate uh, in this very important uh, dialogue and conversation here in the Netherlands. May I also join my colleagues in extending uh, my hearty congratulations and best wishes to NCDO uh, on this uh, 40th anniversary. Um, and also to recognize uh, the role that the first chair uh, of NCDO, uh, our very dear friend, uh, the late Prince Klaus, uh, for providing leadership uh, to the NCDO. Uh, Prince Klaus uh, was a very dear friend uh, and advisor to the Society for International Development uh, for many years, uh, a very passionate uh, speaker uh, on global uh, development issues. Uh, and I recall uh, his momentous and historic address uh, at the SID World Conference in New Delhi uh, in 1988 uh, when he spoke about one world or several or many. Uh, and I think some of you would recall uh, that particular statement, uh, which is as relevant today uh, as it was then, uh, particularly when we are uh, focused here on uh, uh, the history uh, and the current status of, of development cooperation. But allow me, first of all, to uh, introduce myself as the newly elected president uh, of the Society for International Development, taking over uh, from uh, a son of this country, uh, Mr. Jan Pronk. Uh, indeed, my participation at this event as president of SID uh, and not as the former Secretary General uh, of the uh, East African Community, I think uh, uh, adds value uh, to some of the perspectives that I really want to offer uh, here this afternoon. Uh, let me uh, underscore the point uh, that the Society for International Development is probably one of the leading global non-governmental organizations uh, that offer a global space uh, for promoting the centrality of public goods uh, in the development of human security. SID seeks to put global citizenship at the heart of this engagement. Now, during SID's 54 years of, a, of its existence, our role has really been to promote a, gro a global reflection uh, on ideas on development as they relate to fundamental human values, uh, values about what the African-American uh, poet Maya Angelou uh, has described as our oneness. Uh, so it is about social justice, about build human dignity, how we have respect for climate justice uh, and sustainable development generally. It's about equity and particularly uh, the role of women uh, in terms of their political uh, and economic empowerment uh, and generally about global governance that cherishes and promotes the realization of public goods on a sustainable uh, basis. In this thrust, the SID values the role of NCDO uh, in the Netherlands. Indeed, uh, NCDO is an important partner uh, of the Society for International Development here in the Netherlands. Our collective roles are important at a time when the idea of development is in a state of flux. Uh, you could say there is a crisis about what the development model best works in confronting the new uh, challenges that face the world uh, today. Uh, in a recent book, uh, Nancy Birdsall and Francis Fukuyama, uh, titled new, I new Ideas on Development After the Financial Crisis, uh, they seem to posit 
that development thinking is in a, is in a state of impasse. Um, and therefore, little wonder that the ideas about development cooperation and about aid effectiveness, and many of you will recall uh, of the recent conference that took place in South, and South Korea uh, on aid effectiveness and the whole idea uh, that maybe aid is not working, very much reinforcing uh, Dambisa Moyo's uh, uh, thesis about dead aid. Uh, and therefore, I'm very happy uh, that uh, on this 40th anniversary, uh, NCDO uh, has decided to provide this space uh, for dialogue on development cooperation, uh, trade, global solidarity, and citizenship, and sustainable development issues generally. And, and I'm pleased to, uh, to be able to offer my, uh, my thinking. First of all, I see the idea about public goods as human values and as end products of a people-centered development. Global citizenship, which also I think translates uh, into citizenship in its very broad sense, uh, on the other hand, is the driver and the enabler for the realization of public goods. And yet public goods are only best realized and sustained where there is respect uh, for ecology, for environmental sustainability, and indeed, which we, I think, often try to forget, is the respect for human diversity, uh, for mutual respect uh, of our cultural uh, identities. Uh, genocide in Rwanda uh, happened precisely because we, as, as, as global citizens, I think, we lost that sense of respect for human di diversity for cultural uh, identity. So in other words, these three dimensions um, I think are closely uh, knit and, and need to be considered uh, within an integrated fashion, uh, both from the angle uh, of global cooperation uh, as well as national strategic uh, political governance. Uh, secondly, I want to posit that there is little doubt today that global society has become hugely integrated. Uh, the role of ICT has partly enabled this integration, uh, reinforcing economic interdependence. Uh, and this global integration has meant that the quest for realizing public goods and for heightened global citizenship over the global challenges that we face, uh, challenges of poverty, uh, of diseases, of scarce energy resources and water uh, security, uh, of climate change and environmental sustainability, uh, of rights of women, of indigenous peoples, uh, of freedom, as we've seen uh, in the Arab Spring, uh, of the youth job crisis, uh, et cetera, uh, I think has increasingly and largely shifted uh, from the national geographic space uh, or the dominance uh, of the national space uh, to, the global, to the global space. Uh, and indeed, I think following the global financial crisis, uh, I think there is also a heightened global attention uh, on what constitutes responsible capitalism. Uh, I think uh, the British Prime Minister has tried to call it moral capitalism, uh, and not simply uh, responsive capitalism uh, focused on corporate uh, social responsibility. Uh, global citizenship is thus not simply human citizenship, uh, but also, and I think importantly so, corporate uh, citizenship, uh, where shareholder value now also includes, importantly, humankind value. So in a recent think piece uh, published in the Financial Times two weeks ago on January 21 to 22, former U.S. President uh, Bill Clinton reflects on this particular point and he writes as follows, that the financial crisis has made plain that the path we were on was unstable and unsustainable. While our global economic system has brought benefits to many, it has exacerbated 
inequalities, both within and among countries. Too much inequality not only hurts the poor and stifles the dreams of the middle class, it hinders productivity and growth." It's end of quote. So put differently, the promotion of a more just, sustainable, and inclusive prosperity is a global imperative, and global citizenship, meaning responsible citizens, business leaders, politicians, NCDO, SID, and other uh, global civil society organizations has a fundamental responsibility uh, in this particular task. Uh, as Clinton uh, uh, adds in, in, in that think piece, uh, the most effective citizens would be those who succeed in merging their business philanthropic missions to build a future of shared prosperity and shared responsibility. And of course, uh, he cites uh, the role of many uh, of social entrepreneurs and th philanthropic organizations like the Bill Gates Foundation, uh, including uh, his own uh, uh, foundation. But I think what is important to note here uh, is that from the Seattle protests of 1999 to the current Occupy movement, uh, what we are seeing are radical responses uh, to what Jeffrey Sachs has, uh, has, has, has mentioned in his uh, recent book uh, as market institutions running wild over politics and public values. And you will understand uh, why there is this angst and this kind of emotion uh, when, when you look at the African situation that 100,000 individuals now in Africa 100,000 control 60% of Africa's GDP in Africa. So, so you know, uh, you, 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 you can see that the Occupy movement's relevance is not just in the North, that we are now going to face a uh, similar kind of uh, protests uh, in Africa given the disparities, given the inequalities uh, that, that, that are emerging. In fact, uh, for those who are following um, uh, news uh, closely, uh, you will see uh, that in South Africa, for example, uh, the African National Congress is becoming highly polarized. Um, you know, this is an oldest uh, uh, political movement uh, uh, in Africa, uh, not just for fighting uh, against apartheid, but now uh, being responsible for uh, getting the South African uh, economy uh, to to, 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 rip, you know, to, to be able to give the benefits of a new, of a new, uh, of a new dispensation. Uh, and therefore there are discussions about nationalization, about return to, uh, uh, or movement towards public ownership, uh, that, uh, that uh, the, the neoliberal uh, capitalist model uh, is not working uh, for the benefits of the majority of the people. And this is now catching up uh, in the rest of Africa. You know, the whole movement against uh, the extractive industries, um, uh, that there are blood-sucking contracts, uh, that, 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 can't, that economies are not really reaping the benefits of the natural resources that are being exploited uh, in Africa, whether it is uh, by uh, global multinational companies or the role uh, of, uh, of China uh, now in Africa. There is some kind of a backlash uh, that is happening uh, which we cannot uh, uh, close our eyes to. Now, the role of global and regional institutions, uh, the United Nations, uh, the continental bodies like the African Union and regional bodies, uh, ASEAN, Mercosur, uh, the regional economic communities in Africa, acting as global or regional citizens in promoting public goods, um, equity, and sustainable development. I think this is very, very, very uh, paramount uh, and, 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 and of importance. Uh, in Africa, of course, the African Union, uh, as you know, has been playing a very important role uh, in promoting uh, peace and security in addressing the challenges 
uh, of security, of terrorism uh, in Somalia, of uh, fragile uh, states, uh, Somalia, and of course you know uh, the state in Burundi and how uh, following uh, its accession to the Eastern community has been able now uh, to become a democratic, a constitutional uh, state now building strong uh, uh, instruments of, uh, of state and, and joining the economic mainstream uh, of the East African community, but also uh, you know, addressing uh, at the African Union level uh, transboundary human and animal diseases uh, in resolving problems of political governance uh, in Zimbabwe, uh, post-election violence in Kenya, the Darfur uh, question, uh, and generally, you know, trying to engender uh, political governance uh, uh, that, that is symptomatic uh, of, uh, of first world uh, uh, institutional systems uh, of political governance. <clears throat> I could mention that at the uh, East African community level, uh, which I know better having been the Secretary General, uh, there is uh, um, a great deal of work uh, that, that is being done to address uh, uh, the, the need to promote higher levels of economic growth. Uh, Pascal Lamy was very kind to me last night uh, when he hailed uh, my role in the EAC, but much more uh, of the political leadership uh, in the region uh, in fostering uh, the, the development of markets, uh, the, integra the, the integration of our infrastructures to provide interconnectivity, which opens up the economic space uh, for greater productivity in the region, but also addressing some of the ecological uh, issues, the, the, the promotion and protection uh, of the second largest uh, uh, freshwater uh, reserve in, our, in, in the world, the Lake Victoria, uh, but also uh, the various uh, uh, sources of water, uh, 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 ecological, ecological systems, uh, but also uh, in terms of uh, uh, promoting uh, the, the quality of education uh, and addressing the HIV and AIDS uh, pandemic uh, in the region. Uh, uh, on, the regional, uh, on the regional basis. Now, the global financial crisis, of course, has not been helpful uh, in promoting deeper uh, integration, uh, and unfortunately. And I think Pascal Lamy uh, did make reference uh, to, to this particular point, uh, that not only at the global level, but also we're seeing it at the regional level, that there is uh, a great deal of retraction uh, from anything that is of a, of a global or of a regional character. Uh, there is too much inward looking, maybe not protectionism, uh, but I think, um, you know, greater focus on, uh, on the national problematic uh, rather than looking uh, into global solidarity uh, and global citizenship. Uh, thinking that it's the national social and economic crisis that are really important uh, to the political leaderships. And uh, I was talking earlier uh, this morning before we came in here, uh, that here lies a major responsibility uh, for our youth, uh, our global youth, uh, whom I have greater trust and confidence in uh, having a larger picture than some of the uh, old leaders, the ancien regime, uh, uh, you know, if I quote from the French Revolution, uh, I think whose time really has passed. Uh, and I think we need to have a new social movement led by the young people of this world, uh, networking and building global solidarity and providing this new uh, impetus and new, this, uh, and this, this new leadership where we can really uh, renew global solidarity, uh, a solidarity that, uh, uh, that, that pushes uh, shared responsibility uh, in, 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 in addressing uh, global, global, global challenges. Um, I may also mention that uh, uh, on the green economy as well as sustainable development, I think there are uh, enormous frustrations on, on that front. Uh, I was reading a, a recent piece uh, uh, looking at uh, what has happened in Durban uh, at the recent conference on climate change, and, and somebody describes this as a debacle, delusion, disaster, disillusionment. Uh, and of course now, as we look towards Rio uh, plus 20 uh, uh, in June uh, this year, uh, it, it seems to me that global uh, citizenship must remain uh, committed and resolute 
uh, in advancing the Kyoto Protocol objectives uh, and come to some kind of new uh, targets for uh, uh, carbon, carbon e emissions. Uh, but ab above all, I think Africa's uh, uh, and maybe the, the, the rest of the developing world's expectation uh, is that the Green Climate Fund uh, will now receive the necessary resources from the developed world. Uh, the commitment for $100 billion uh, is yet to materialize. Uh, and unless this uh, materializes, I think there will be a disconnect, there will be a disjuncture uh, in any future uh, global negotiations on climate change uh, because the poor world will not be able to address uh, the climates of uh, the cost of climate change. Uh, now, at a critical moment like now, um, when we are looking towards the end of the MDGs in 2015, I think it's important to realize that development cooperation uh, is a critical element of global citizenship. Uh, when developed countries, uh, Netherlands is included, uh, seem to be retreating from the very idea uh, of development cooperation, and we'll hear from the minister uh, this afternoon whether this, this, this is correct. Uh, and whether we see this retreat uh, in terms of uh, the movement from blood transfusion to blood creation, uh, we give that to your own interpretation or both, uh, I think as global citizens, uh, we need to question uh, whether we are not actually seeing an erosion in global solidarity, uh, in shared responsibility uh, for the realization uh, of global public goods. Uh, uh, now, representing the Center for International Development, uh, we, uh, as ISID, are very much committed uh, in providing a global space uh, for a global uh, conversation and dialogue uh, about this overall question uh, about development cooperation. Uh, what is the state of play? What is the future of development cooperation? Is it healthy, what we are uh, currently uh, seeing? And of course, NCDO uh, has much work to do also uh, on that particular front. Uh, I think I'll stop there. Uh, thank you very much indeed for giving me this. Thank you.